everybody. Welcome back to The Pursuit. And it's, of course, Jeff Hutchin here with John Sporov. And we've got another exciting episode for you today. You don't even know who our presenting sponsor is, do you? Yes, I do. Who? It's going to be uh, Premier Home, Lo- Home Loans today. Actually, it's not. But it was a good, ge- it's a good guess. Well, I wanted to give them a free plug okay. as well. Well, th- this other partner that I'm going to talk about actually partners with them in a, in a way from the standpoint of you got to buy a house, but then you also have to get your money. But let's talk about the, the first step. you got to buy the house first. Okay. You've got to find the house you're going to buy. So I know. And we've got yeah. a partner for you, and it's Trinity Team Real Estate Co. Dot com. Reach out to these guys, family-owned business, Eric Frisky and his team up there. Uh, are focused all over the state of Colorado, but primarily uh, northern uh, Denver, I would say, is kind of their yeah. kind of their sweet spot, Denver, northern Denver, but they'll go everywhere. So if you have a need in this crazy market for a partner that puts you in the middle of the transaction, not at the end, they put you in the middle. You're the most important part of that transaction. If you're looking for that kind of partner, we've got a partner for you, faith-based, family-owned. Eric Frisky over at Trinity Team Real Estate Co.com. Make sure you reach out to them. Well, Bud, we've got a busy couple months coming. Man, up. we do. You know, I'm I'm getting set to leave on. Uh, we're recording this on Friday. Uh, we're, I'm getting set to leave this coming Monday for uh, the border of Ukraine. Wait, are you allowed to even say this? Because aren't you going in like a covert mission? Are you even allowed to say where you're going? I, it's, I hope not. I hope people know <laughs> where we're going. Um, but we and uh, myself no, and a team from our church are heading into. Um, we're actually flying into Romania and then driving through Moldova to the border of Ukraine, and we'll be we'll be partnering with a ministry there called New Hope Eurasia. And by the way, an incredible ministry that, that needs your help. If you're out there and you're like, man, how can I help support the cause on the border with a with a reputable 501c3 nonprofit yeah. that is faith based that's going to take this money and it's going to go to where it needs to go to the right people. I want to encourage you to look up the website, New Hope Eurasia, and that's spelled E-U-R-A-S-I-A dot org, New Hope Eurasia dot org. And Oleg and his wife have been doing work in Moldova for quite some time, and they have really shifted because there's you know hundreds of thousands of uh, refugees coming in from Ukraine that uh, they're trying to care for, provide for their basic needs, and then also that provides an incredible opportunity to share the gospel. And so... We're going there to do whatever they need, quite honestly. It, we Building tents, mm-hmm. building beds. Uh, we're taking some water filters from uh, Vivo Blue and yeah. Water for All. And uh, so we're going to be hoping to provide some clean water for people and uh, just kind of serve. And so your prayers for us is, would be really appreciated. I'll be there for a week. And then you've got a different kind of trip coming up. Yeah. You're going to Israel. Yeah, going to Israel on, on a uh, pilgrimage. The, the guy's leading it, even refi- refuses to call it a tour. But I've never been. I know you've been before yeah. a couple times, maybe. But uh, I just can't wait. You know, we were talking about where we're going to see and or where we're going to go and what we're going to see and everything. And I said, man, my bar is so low. Like all you got to do is just take me and take me to the Sea of Galilee and tell me, show me where Jesus stood. That's enough. Yeah, no <laughs> he stood here. Okay, good. Well, you'll be forever changed, man. I can't I wait. Can tell you that. I cannot it's, wait. It's going to change. It's going to change everything. And then for we've you. got you know Rwanda for both of us coming up. We're leading some groups over there. So, man, we're going to be. Man, I, I just foresee this summer, um, and, and we're going to be doing a little studio change over the summer as well. Um, when these guys tune into us, there's no telling where we'll be. We may be filming from you know the border of Ukraine. We may be filming in a jungle in Rwanda. We may be filming all over the place. So it's going to be exciting. You got to do you got to do some stuff in, in Israel for us. That would yeah, be incredible yeah, so for sure. People can see the things that you're seeing and. Um, but, yeah, so Pursuit's going global here over the next couple of months, and so you're going to see some different looks from us. And you mentioned we're going to have a studio change. We're actually moving locations, so we're excited about that. And uh, our friends over at Summit Church here locally are allowing us to use their pursuit, their studios and it's their amazing. podcast studios. Yeah. So uh, we're not sure what to expect there. but um, Well, you said that there's like, you know, all four walls have four different, different backgrounds. Sets and we may have a Monday background, a Wednesday yeah. background. Man, that's going to be fun. We'll see. It'll be, be fun. Do a green screen and... You know, project like some, I don't know, some Being on the beach. lions or something behind yeah, exactly. us. Or, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, good, man. Well, you, uh, you, you've got, uh, you got some thoughts on your mind today you want to talk yeah. about, and so let's let's kick it off. What do yeah. you got? Yeah, all right. So as, you, as people out there know, we just kind of, it's sort of this, not a stream of consciousness, that just sort of these random thoughts that might, might occur to you. But um, I don't know, interesting things that we're reading as we're, as we're both engaged with helping uh, you know, guys that were coaching, walk through challenges in their life and discipling men and, and all of the things that we do. And, and uh, this last week, um, I ran across a, um, 
a sermon by a guy that was, he actually lived in, in the 1300s, and he was like one of the fathers of the Scottish church, this guy named Thomas Chalmers, hmm. Thomas Chalmers. And, um, and the sermon was entitled, The Expulsive Power of a New Affection. Hmm. And that got me, I'm like, what is this? You know, it, it sounds, I don't know, just, what's your first reaction to hearing, you know, that, that, the title of that sermon and where that might go, right? Well, expulsion, I think of getting rid of, uh-huh. um, the, ex- the expulsion power of a new affection. Yeah. Yeah. So affections are interesting things, aren't they? Yeah, they are. You know, are they, well, let me ask you this. Are affections bad or good? Uh, I think it depends. Yeah. I think it depends, right? There's, there's some affections, like we have an affection towards our wife. We have yeah. an affection towards our kids. We have affection towards the church, towards scripture, towards, you know, there, there's Banana some good things. might, you know, could have a... That, now you're starting to get into the not so good. <laughs> but, right? Um, but, no, I, affections in and of themselves aren't bad. It's just where they're directed, I think, where they're is, directed. is where you've got to be careful. And so I think when we find, and, and that's the nature of, of sin itself, right, that our, our heart is led astray. Um, there's an affection within our heart that draws us to a counterfeit, whatever that is. I mean, we tend to think of this in, in sort of, you know, is this sexual sin? Is it, It's all of the above. It is that, and it's all of the above. Our heart is deceptive, and, and it, who can know it, right? Yeah. There's a scripture around that in Psalms, I think. And um, and so we, but the, the problem is that God put it there. He gave us these things called affections. Um, they, they, as you said, man, they, they, uh, enrich relationships, right? Can you imagine, uh, you know, the the context and the purpose of your relationship with your wife is purely because she's a good mother, hmm. yeah. <laughs> or because you feel like, you know, um, we can. Oh, my iPad just cut out, so I guess I won't be looking at scripture today. There you go. Yeah, See? and uh, yeah, or that, um, uh, you know, that that well, you know, we can we can build a good life together, and all of these things are really important, and and uh, certainly. Um, valuable characteristics to have within a within a relationship, but if you're missing affection, that's not going to last. It's not going to last very long, and it's sure not going to be well, very rewarding, exciting, uh, enjoyable. I, I'll, yes, I, I think I think the, I think it can last. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is you just kind of suffer through it. You know, I, I I know a lot of marriages that they have little to zero affection in their marriage, mm-hmm. and they just kind of coexist. Mm-hmm. And so can can you coexist? Certainly. But is it, back to your point, is it what God intended for us? Um, absolutely not. You yeah. know, here's what's crazy. Think about this for a second. And this is going to, we're going to get a little bit R-rated for, for a moment. But okay. I mean, you think about, you think about the gift that God gave us in marriage. Mm-hmm. And one of the beautiful gifts that God gave us in marriage was sex. Mm-hmm. And and what's fascinating is, is you could look at it and go, well, sex is for one reason. Sex is simply to procreate. Right. You go, Okay. Well, if that's the case, then then why was why is it such a um, a wonderful experience, pleasure wise? Exactly. What why couldn't it just be an act that you go through, whatever right. that is, the act that you go through, and there's no pleasure associated with it's right. just simply to to inseminate the woman so she can have a baby. You know, right. why, why would God add that element to it? And I think that's kind of what you're getting to is. Is what what God has intended, what God has created for us, and there's a lot of beautiful gifts that are buried in the affections and, and the pleasures of life. But what where it gets screwed up is what the enemy does. He comes in, like you said, and we've talked about it multiple times. He yeah. comes in and he creates this counterfeit to the things that God intended to be for good. Mm-hmm. Right? So yep. Is that kind of where you're headed? Absolutely. Okay. And I mean, even as you describe that, I'm thinking about even our relationship with Him, He Himself, God Himself. Um, there's when we talk about the word intimacy, it involves affection. Affection and intimacy go hand in hand. Um, and can you imagine a relationship with God that is literally transactional based? Mm-hmm. To say, you know, my interest in you is simply to to remove your sin, separate you as, from it as far as the east is from the west, and enlist you in the army of God, and and I'll see you in heaven. Mm-hmm. Like enjoy, you know, bear through your life. Um, uh, be obedient to me, and if you're good enough, then then when you know at the end of your life, I'll let you in. Mm. Uh, you know, you'll earn the pass into heaven. No, we get to have an intimate experience with Him on a daily basis that involves the heart, our heart's affection. Mm-hmm. God hears the desires, the dreams that I've got in my heart. Is this aligned to where you know to 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 what you're inviting me into? If it's not, why? 
and why why am I drawn there and what do you have for me that's better these are so important for us to ask these questions you know what I was having a uh, we have a small group that meets at our, at our house on Thursday nights from our church and, and my wife and I facilitate that and we were having a conversation last night and, and one of the gentlemen in our group uh, his name's Ray right and Ray's a, a listener of the pursuit and he's just an incredible man what's of up, God. Ray I just love Ray all right man and he uh, he, he asked a question yesterday it was it was really powerful he said, we were talking about the Garden of Eden, and we were mm. talking about the moment um, where, where Adam and Eve were, were presented a choice by Satan, right? And that choice was, will you agree with me? Uh, will, will you align with me and walk away from God? Will, will you oh, begin yeah. to question and doubt the things that God has spoken to you, right? And that's did, where... Did he really say that you will die? Right. Yeah, it, that he, stuff. And that, that's what Satan does. He, he gets us to just begin to doubt and begin to question, mm-hmm. and, and that's where he gets a foothold, right? Mm-hmm. And so we were talking about that, and, and Ray asked a great question. It's a really good question. He said, why is it that God created us that way? Mm-hmm. Why didn't God just, I mean, he can do anything he wants. Why would he even allow evil into the picture? Why would he even allow uh, that, that option? Why would he even allow choice? And, you know, if he wants us to be affectionate towards him and be in relationship, why didn't he just create it that way? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and then there not be an option. And that's a great question. Mm-hmm. And, and what I came back with, and, and I think it's true, is that in order for love to exist, because that's what, that's what affection is, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's love, it's a type of love. In order for love to exist, what else also has to exist? Free will. A choice. Yeah. A choice has to exist yeah. in order for love to exist. And so, you know, again, you talk about this, this, this battle that we have and this, this struggle that we have in, in walking in obedience to God mm-hmm. and making sure that our affections are aligned in the ways that they do. That's what we're faced with every day is we have the real authentic uh, affection that, that God has called us to and then the counterfeit that draws us into sin. Yeah. So I want to talk about now, if you find yourself in that place of, I got drawn into this, my, it's, it's satisfying some aspect of, of, the, of the affection of my heart, how do I get out? Okay. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. But I think what you just brought up is as important, if not more important. Would you do me a favor? Would you go to um, 1 Samuel yeah. real quick? Yeah. Um, for Samuel, I think it's 13, and this is now useless. It's just a paperweight, apparently. Um, <laughs> but this is, uh, to set it up, um, and I want to say it's around 10 or so. Okay. It's, it's when uh, Samuel tells Saul, because you've done this thing, you've, your kingdom has been ripped from you. It's, it's not going to continue. Okay. Um, you, so if you can find that real quick yep. when, I'm, when I'm setting it up. And I, and I want you to... to um, to read, if you will, what follows Samuel's rebuke of Saul. Saul got prideful very quickly in his, in his kingship, and he was the first king of Israel. The people cried out for a king and, mm-hmm. and so that they could be like everyone else, and God said, okay, this, we'll, we'll give him a king, even though he wanted to be king. Mm-hmm. Um, he wanted, that's, the, that's what he's after, right? Uh, it's no, never an intermediary. It's never God's will for there to be an intermediary, intermediary between you and mm-hmm. him or me mm-hmm. and him. And, uh, and so we look at what he did and to say his heart was led astray. His affection was around the power and pride that's associated with his kingship, and he disobeyed. And then it juxtaposes, like that word, juxtaposes? Big word. Juxtaposes. I think that's even right. Um, Saul the posture of his heart against the one to come. And what does it okay. say? So I'm going to start in verse 11. This is uh, 1 Samuel 13, verse 11. Mm. What have you done? Asked Samuel. Saul replied, When I saw that the men were scattering, and that you, you did not come at the set time, and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, Now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I was compelled to offer the burnt offering. Verse 13. You acted foolishly. Samuel said, you have not kept the command of the Lord your God that he gave to you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Perfect. Thank you. So let me ask you, we, we know who, who is that? David. That's David. A man after his own heart. So surely what God meant, and I'm being super facetious here yeah. and sarcastic, surely what he meant was, Saul, you didn't perform exactly right. 
I'm looking for somebody who's never going to sin, never going to be led astray, right. never is going to be perfect. Right. And, and we, that would qualify as going after uh, being after my own heart. Is that right? And that's not, certainly Absolutely not true. Not. I hope it's not true. Good Lord. We're all in trouble. Yeah. And David would, would have been the first. David was in yeah, big time trouble. Right. So the point is, it was not that he was looking for and needing somebody to be perfect. He ripped it away from Saul because of the posture of that man's heart. Mm. So the thing that he's after is the affection, if I could say it that way, of our hearts. Mm. He, he's looking for a man and a woman that's after his own heart mm. um, to entrust with with the, the purposes for which he's put them in this on this mm. planet, mm. to walk those things out. And so I think that's important to set up like right away when we're talking about wrestling with the affections of our heart and what those affections have led us toward, I think it's important to understand that he is not expecting nor needing us to be perfect. What he needs is a perfect posture of our heart. Mm. And quick Thoughts? quick to repent, qu- okay, quick to so turn. Let's talk about it. What does yeah. a perfect posture of heart mean? What? Go ahead. That, well, you know, that's you know, we, we've talked about this oftentimes is, um, you know, when we do sin, it's not if we sin, it's when we do sin. That there's, there's two responses that are going to take place. There's two ways that we can respond. And there's two voices that are speaking to us, right? You know, the okay. voice of the enemy. What's the voice of the enemy doing? The, the voice of the enemy is there to convict. Con- condemn excuse me to condemn yeah, yeah. to condemn us and basically a, a condemnation a, 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 when he speaks it over it's a verdict that he's mm-hmm. declaring over us that we are done we're toast we're no use of god god does not love you what why would he ever want to be with you what if he he knows what you're doing if everyone else knew what you were doing blah yep. blah, blah blah all those voices that you hear yep. and it's always designed right to pull us away from god whereas the holy spirit in one of one of his responsibilities is to convict to draw us closer it's to make us aware of the sin in the moment and in a posture of pulling us back into relationship with God. And so that's the first thing I think about when I think about the posture, the, the posture of the heart is, again, to your point, not that we're going to be perfect, but when we do fall, when we do fail, it's having the ability to respond quickly mm-hmm. to the voice of the Holy Spirit, not allowing us to go down the path of condemnation, mm-hmm. but instead posturing our heart in a way that says, I now need the blood of Jesus. I need the blood of Jesus mm-hmm. over me to restore me into that relationship with my father. Right? Yeah. And, and, and I love what you said there. Um, just sort of a bent toward that, a bent to God, a default back like a honing device almost. Um, and, and I think it's also important for us to recognize that, that once we we have become a new creation, like second Corinthians uh, chapter five says, and the oldest passed away and all things have become new that any sort of, feeling of separation that we've got as a as a as a consequence of our sin is an illusion it is the condemnation that is being brought in Mm -hmm. to say he expected you to be perfect you're not he's ashamed of you you should run and hide Mm -hmm. right and so we experience and that's what we fight with all of the time through this thing and and if it, it when you play that out we're both dads i mean think about what that would if we fathered the way that we think god fathers us imagine how harsh it would sound right it says my son comes home with a uh, uh an f on a test that he took and um and me looking at him and saying you know what you're not eating tonight you need to find somebody somewhere else to sleep you're out of here until you bring mm-hmm. me back in a mm-hmm. isn't mm-hmm. that cra- but it seems crazy to even kind of go down that path but how often do you or i Think that way about God when in, in the midst of our, our failures. Yeah, you know, um, I'm debating my mind right now whether even to talk about this story. Okay. Um, but uh, there'll be no names mentioned here. Yeah. But th- th- I'm going to go there with you. Okay. okay. So uh, a good friend of mine has a daughter mm-hmm. that is uh, attracted to same sex. She's a lesbian. Mm-hmm. And she, um, matter of fact, she's about to get married uh, mm-hmm. in June. Mm-hmm. And he's he's a he's a follower of Christ, and he loves the Lord, and he's really really wrestling with this. Right, it's his daughter that's pursuing um, what he believes to be sin, uh, what the what the Word teaches to be sin, which I agree that it is sin. Um, she is a Christian. Mm-hmm. She's a follower of Christ. Mm-hmm. She knows she knows the Word of God, and and so we were talking about the question: Is it possible? For someone that's a part of the LGBTQ community mm-hmm. to be a Christian, mm. right? So this is this is clearly, and again, he, 
I did not expect to go down this path, <laughs> but right. But this is a type of an affection that you know. In this particular case of this woman, she has an affection towards same sex, mm-hmm. and it's just something she has. She claims that it's not something she chose. She claims that it's something she's been born with. She has this affection towards same sex, and the and the, and the question was, is it possible for someone that's a part of the LGBTQ community? I have a hard time saying that. <laughs> to be a Christian. Let me just stop there and ask you to respond to that. Not fair. Not fair. Um, Let's just unpack it together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did not expect that we were going to go this, this direction today. That's okay. Um, but we will. And um, I'll tell you that my answer to that is yes. Okay. Okay. Tell me why. And, and it's hard we we carry around with us sort of a um an unspoken oftentimes ranking we know it actually as the yoke you remember that Mm -hmm. as we talked about kind of the the rabbi's teaching and and this is most important and this is which of the laws is most which and 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 jesus was confronted with this as well Mm -hmm. around the uh is it lawful for somebody to go rescue their uh, neighbor's ox on a sunday Mm -hmm. on the sabbath right and so implicit in that is a weighing of what's more important, the law mm-hmm. of loving your neighbor or the Sabbath. honoring the Sabbath, right? right? And and uh, and so Jesus was confronted with this whole ranking. Healing thing. on the Sabbath. Healing on the Sabbath. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so um, I just think that, that we get wrapped up in, a, in discussions like this around, well, if a man looks upon a woman and lusts, he's committed adultery with her in, in his heart. So what does that make him? An adulterer. Mm-hmm. Versus a person who is attracted to the same sex, who is in relationship with another person of the same sex, what does that make that person? And now is an adulterer uh, more or less guilty than a, mm-hmm. um, a, a homosexual? Okay. Right? And, and, and so... You could say, well, okay, well, this this one involves an act that maybe this person has repented of, and he's not taking or she's not taking up, you know, the identity of that sin, and the other is walking fully, embracing, in the, embracing the identity of it. This is right? who I am. This is what I'm about. Right. This is what I'm going to be. Versus, this is a struggle I have. I'm really trying hard to keep from doing it, but I can't seem to break it. Right. Right. It's kind of two different camps. Yeah. So, but do you think? Do you think God? differentiates and delineates between the two you know i I think but even within we just a good topic dude yeah it is a great topic i mean because i have to okay you and i not to this is not a change of subject but this here's an illustration of it because i want to get back to that yeah we will so it it is this when you you are you and i are both college football officials Uh and we're given tests all the time so when you're given a test it says a first and ten of the b27 okay what do you have to do when you read that question Break it down into pieces. Right. And then how do you do that? Is it just with words or do you see something? I see it. You have to I visualize, visualize yeah. and, and create a narrative mm-hmm. and say, this is maybe a little bit like that play I had last year at mm-hmm. USC mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, and so you create a film role of what this might look like in our heads. Mm-hmm. Now, what you just did when or what I just did, I guess, when I when I sort of com- contrasted a um, a person in that in a LGBTQ relationship Mm -hmm. with a what jesus said a a man who looks upon a woman and and lusted and is committed adultery with her in her her heart in his heart i just created a a film role a narrative to play out that says this person over here has fully embraced it and has no conviction about it and is in this relationship almost with a a fist toward god and this other one is like ah man i screwed up you know i love my wife i i don't know what i was doing that's dumb you know, and and just kind of put it away and never has to deal with that again. We know that both of those cases are not true. Mm-hmm. So where is the middle ground between the two, between the person that's in that type of relationship? And there's some level of conviction there, but I don't know how else to deal with this. There's this affection in my heart. I don't understand yeah. why I feel this way. Yep. Versus this other one that's like, yeah, I committed adultery by looking at her, you know, in that way. And by the way, I had another conversation today with the waitress of the restaurant and did the same thing. Right, right. So it, I think part of it has to do with um, the question in, in the word Christian. Because cause when I say the word Christian, that's going to bring all kinds of things up in your mind. Mm-hmm. So what if, I, what if I rephrase the question? 
And I said, can someone that's a part of that community, I don't want to say it because I can't say it without bumbling I over just, it. I keep doing it. But too. if someone that's a part of that community, um, is it possible they can be saved? It's a different question. Let me ask you a different question. Can a person that's involved in that community experience all the promises of God? No way. And the things that he has in store for you as 1, a child. thousand percent no. I See, would... that, that's, this is where it begins. This is when you begin to slice it up. It be, you can begin to understand it a little bit more, right? Yeah. Because I think we have a tendency to make broad statements and go, a person that's experiencing a same-sex attraction a lifestyle, there's no way they can be a Christian. Some people would say that. that there's a narrative out there that, that absolutely supports that. And, and for all the reasons and many more that you've already shared, yeah. I think you've laid a good foundation as to how that is possible and how a person can be a follower of Christ yet still struggle with this issue that they have, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then when you talk about this is where the rubber meets the road. First of all, you and I are not to judge as it relates to Saved, not saved, going to hell, going to heaven. That's not for us to decide, nor are we to judge. So when we use the phrase, do not judge, people use that all the time. Our society uses it. You cannot judge me. What they're saying is you don't have the right to examine my life. Or, yeah, or have an opinion. About and have an opinion it, yeah. about whether or right. not it's right That's or not wrong. what it means. That's not what it means. What it means is you don't have the ability to declare a verdict for me as judgment. it relates to right. my salvation or right. not. Right. Because Scripture is very clear that we are called to examine mm -hmm. one another and examine each other's life and in love sure. confront and challenge and say listen you need to walk in what the word of god says to be true mm -hmm. and so um what is absolutely true of both the the homosexual or lesbian in our example and the um the man that struggles with lust yes what is true of both of them and i think we can say this with significant confidence is they are not going to be able to experience the full covenant that God has for them. I totally agree with that. His promises. There's, there's a life that's waiting for us. Now, it doesn't mean you better finally pass the exam in order to experience the land that flows with milk mm -hmm. and honey. It's not a finally you're perfect. We've been waiting for you to figure it out, so come on over to the good side, right? It's not that. But there, it's like a, a lightning of the ship, a gradual awakening to the Romans 8, 19 sort mm -hmm. of a life. Mm -hmm. He said, all of creation is waiting for you to wake up, to wake up. To, and how do we wake up? We don't just jolt up. There's a process that we go through every morning around the coming back to consciousness, being, being able to focus, being in touch with the day it is, and, you know, and the next the thing to be done that day. There's a process of coming to consciousness that we go through every day. And, and so I think also is this Romans 8, 19 transformation that's laid out. We talk about Romans 12, 2 all the time. Part of that is the renewal of the mind around all this stuff. But I want to get back if we can, and I know we, we've got to wrap real quick. But it is, and I think this lays it out perfectly. It's not so much that we're going to get mastery over the thing that our heart has been is dr being drawn to. Mm -hmm. Because that that's the counterfeit. And God put that desire within us example okay. example okay is this yeah i'll give you an example go do it the the guy that struggles with lust let's go back to that guy mm. say god take away this lustful desire from me so let's talk about that where, where would so, that leave a man well it, it would leave the man with uh virtually no ability to have any kind of deep level of intimacy with his wife right or see or another person and, and, not, and it doesn't have to be even sexual it's it's intimacy sure right? it's not just sexual it's intimacy and that takes many forms right um, so instead, what you're saying then is instead of saying, gosh, take this, this desire, this lust away from me, instead the prayer should be, Lord, help me to redirect that passion and that, and that desire into its right place, into the ways that you've designed it to be. And, and that's yeah. geared towards my wife or towards you know, your spouse. Correct. Because, it, 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 again, the process of mastery of ourselves is not so much that we're able to resist this temptation it's that i've found the authentic to plug into in terms of my affection Very good. and that so a uh, uh, quick example jesus said that the law of um of grace and life or of the spirit and life is um greater than the than the law of sin and death you remember that scripture mm -hmm. says and i almost think about it like this 
that the law of jet propulsion overrides the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was on a plane two days ago, and I can mm -hmm. tell you that that is true. If that jet propulsion were to stop midair, what would happen? Gravity would take over. So gravity is still in effect, mm -hmm. but this affection, this power is stronger, right? And so when we're drawn into the, the whole thing, and, and it is so tempting to do it, to say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. So what are the five things I need to put into place? Oh, I need accountability. I need more accountability. I need to do this. I need to do that. And now we're dealing with trying to stifle the heart around the thing that God's like, no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't cause you to not God have put that. In you. Right. I just got something better for you. Yeah. So there, and as you get, begin to yield and be, get in the habit of yielding to that greater affection, if I could quote Thomas Chalmers, there's an expulsive power around the counterfeit. So reveal to Lord, your prayer, our prayer should be reveal to me the authentic, and help me to stay away from the counterfeit. That's yeah. really the prayer, right? It's not take yeah. lust away from me. Exactly. It's show me, show me the authentic. Isn't that Direct freeing? Me towards the authentic. It, let me ask you this: Is that not more freeing than t than the finger pointing in your face to say you are doing wrong and you need to stop doing yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. It's like no, there's something better that you need to start doing. What a different message that is, man. You bet. You bet. It, that would be the equivalent is, is, and this is how crazy it would be, you have a struggle with eating, and you're just eating crap all the time. You're yeah. eating cookies and cake and all the things I love and chips. Those are my three favorites. You're preaching now. And the, the equivalent of that would be to say, Lord, take away hunger from me. I never, I'm going to cut out my tongue and my teeth. I'm it's never going to eat again. It's ridiculous. God created us that way. So instead of going for the counterfeit, which are these things, help me to eat in a healthy way. He's not saying stop eating, yeah. take hunger away from me. He says redirect it to the authentic. It, it, uh, it's just another way to think about it. One more quick thought on that is that when you actually give it, let me ask you this. When it, it, you talk about chips and cookies and all that kind of stuff, but honestly, honestly, no humor, you know, all humor aside around it, when you have like a an actual like, um, smoothie with fresh juice extract and a, and something wholesome and a salad and this and that. How does your body you feel, feel better? Oh, dude, there's something more rewarding. Yeah. So it's not just a say, okay, good. You are morally good today. No, the reward of being morally good is life. You think better. You have more energy. You oh, sleep better. Jesus, all those things. Thank you, Lord. So, yes. All right, good stuff. Hey, hope you guys were encouraged today. Hey, next time you'll see us, or at least probably next time you'll see me. I'll be in the front lines, man. Man. Maybe not literally, but uh, at least second or third tier. In so Pray for him. Be in prayer for us. We'd really yeah. appreciate it. Hey, thanks for joining us. Thank you for taking just a few moments out of your time. I hope your bike ride or your Treadmill. elliptical trainer or whatever it was was or, beneficial. Or your trans uh, transatlantic flight that we found out when somebody yeah, was watching us on an airplane. I hope it's been good. Goodness. Hopefully it passed the time a little bit quicker. And yeah. you picked up something today that's truth, right? Carry it with you. Make it a part of who you are. Thanks for joining us. We're right here on The Pursuit, the relentless pursuit of truth and transformation. We'll see you next time.